we are going to take all of your functionality of your PC and we're going to move it to the cloud. So we're going to we're going to take it out of your your living room area of your house that's at the front door. We're going to take it out of there. We're going to move it to a back bedroom. And because we're going to lock it in this back bedroom, you can now leave the front door of your house unlocked. <laughs> like, what? You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 314 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA Firm and Peace, and joining me is Donna Grindle of CART. Good morning. Right. <laughs> well, that was pretty fast. <laughs> I wasn't even ready. Like, what? What? I- uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, I almost introduced the podcast as the show title because <laughs> I was looking at it. But so today's uh, title is going to be Cyber Squirrel, <laughs> spelled S Q W E R L, because we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a new thing. Yeah. So, you know, you've always seen the whole squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. It reminds me of you ever been to one of these events where they stick a guy inside of this chamber with all the money flying around and uh-huh. he has to like grab as much as he can. And, and mm-hmm. even though there's tons of money in there, he walks out with like five bucks. <laughs> it's like, could you not grab any more than that? Yeah. That's everybody's the, trying to get the big bucks. I'm like, get bucks. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And so um, that's kind of how putting together today's episode was like, there's so much flying around right now. Like mm-hmm. just trying to figure out what to grab is, is the hard part. But, yeah, um, so we couldn't decide on one. We came out with a whole bunch of them. It, there's so much to cover that we know being a weekly podcast, that if we wait till next week, we'll have something else to talk about. And this, you know, we'll just have to throw it in trash, which yeah. honestly we do quite often anyway. We have so many things we're like, oh, we need to talk about this. But then something else comes out. And we're like, well, forget it. That's all news now. <laughs> we just have to throw <laughs> <No>. it away. <laughs> uh, but there's, there's so much out there we need to talk about. Some craziness, as always. Um, yeah. Some surprises. Some you better be listening. Some yeah. Some you should have been listening because we were right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, there's a lot. Yeah, so we're going to wrap all that up in, in today's show. And um, and we're going to try to do it within a quick time frame. So listen quickly because we will be talking quickly. Uh, as long <laughs> as there's not a squirrel moment in our squirrel episode. And there could be. So. <laughs> Uh, and we'll tell you a little bit more about how squirrels can disrupt the world. <laughs> <laughs> Which we found. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before we do that, thanks to the donors. We definitely appreciate your port, your port, <laughs> your support. <laughs> and also, thank you for those people who are sharing out the podcast because we are definitely seeing more people that are coming and getting help with hip hop. Yes, else. please. So uh, please help us out there. Yep. We, so. we we got new stats now, and it's really cool. Mm-hmm. And now that our uh, our hosting provider has some really cool new stats, and so now we'll know if you're not listening every week, or at least to every episode within the first 30 days of its release. Yeah. We will know That'll specifically. That'll be important to us. We will know specifically if you are listening. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's um, good. But I was on a, a webinar earlier in the week. Or was it last week? I don't know. My days run together. I think it was last week. Um, so on a webinar, and somebody was like, "Love your podcast," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, a podcast listener!" I <laughs> know. So <it> was, <laughs> no, like, we get great. so excited over this. I know. It's funny because they people that listen get excited when they talk to us, and we're excited to talk to them. It's so funny. So everybody's excited. <laughs> I know. Hallelujah. There I know. You go. All right, so uh, you ready? You ready to dive into this? As well as I can be. Let's All just right. point out that we're both super tired, so we also have that issue making it hard for us to decide things. So yeah. who knows what'll come out? That's too, yeah, I don't know that that's not normal for us on a Friday. You know, by the time we get to Friday, we're just like, oh gosh, is the week over yet? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Cyber Squirrel because as we were coming up with this show title, I was like, you know, we're we're spelling squirrel differently, and it would be just my luck that spelling squirrel that way would probably rank on some kind of porn site as some fetish. And so I was like, we better 
I better Google this to make sure there's no craziness that's going to come <laughs> back if somebody, you know, happens to search for CyberScore. <laughs> but we did. We did search for it. And guess what? Not the misspelling version, but the correct spelling version actually came back with something. Cyber Squirrel 1. Yeah. We, we found out that th- there was a group called Cyber Squirrel 1 that was tracking, of all things, how animals disrupt critical infrastructure versus hacking attacks. <laughs> it's quite fascinating. It is quite fascinating. And of course, that's hit us down. <laughs> It's squirrel hole. <laughs> it, it did send us down the squirrel hole, but we yeah, um yeah, yeah. we we did yeah. find out. And this, I think we were the article we were looking at was a like a 2017 article, but we found out that at least at that time frame, uh, squirrels were beating hackers by a long shot in taking down critical infrastructure. <laughs> there you go. I think it was still they they just announced that they were going into secret statistics. They were no longer going to publish the website effective January 2021. So the last stats they had were from 2019 and the squirrels were definitely still winning. Wow. So for all you nerd folks that just want something crazy, (laughs) check that out. It's It's, amazing. You got to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a conversation starter, if nothing else. And, um, Mm -hmm. and and by the way, squirrels actually kill people. Yeah. (laughs) So go check it out. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. It, it, it was. All right. So for the HIPAA Say what? segment, we are going to talk about some more craziness. Well, let's, let's start with the, how did, how does it, how's it go, Donna? Well, knock me down and steal my teeth. We done double D done told you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> shout out to two of our listeners who, um, who gave us those and we rammed them both together as Southerners often do with words. <laughs> <laughs> And came up with her own phrase. Uh, uh, it's great. So let's talk about uh, Amazon. And, you know, we talked about this, gosh, what, two, three years ago, maybe? How many? We've done multiple episodes about when Amazon Alexa. And you remember, you even had one in your office back then that started talking to you in the <laughs> middle of us recording one time. I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it... it we have repeatedly done episodes and discussed the fact that these things listen mm-hmm. and you can find amazing things online when you go read your account. And we also know that Amazon has people listening to them. Yeah. I mean, even my Android phone sometimes will say, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. And I'm like, no, I was talking to you. <laughs> 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 but yeah, these things yeah. listen all the time. and. We've talked about this before, but people still have this this thing that, well, it only listens when you say the word. I'm like, no, it yeah. has to be listening to hear the word. <laughs> and sometimes it thinks it heard the word <laughs> yeah. and it records it. Whatever, you know, within 30 seconds, either direction, it's recording backwards. And, you know, we told the story of the people working in their kitchen, having a whole discussion about, what kind of flooring or cabinets or something, and a random person from the guy's contacts sends them an urgent message, y'all need to turn off your Alexa because it just sent me a voicemail telling me what you were talking about. And here's what you were talking about. Wow. So we right away have said, no, they do not go in patient areas. Now, in long-term care facilities, those kind of places, the patient can bring them in, but the patient is choosing to have them in, and we make sure patients understand that Mm -hmm. because they are great to have by the bedside. However, they listening. They listening. Yeah. And they taking notes when you don't expect them to. So an article published uh, by Becker's Health IT says that there are some healthcare workers that have filed a class action lawsuit against Amazon. I know, right? Alleging that their Alexa devices recorded their HIPAA protected conversations. Mm-hmm. And this came out in also in a July 2nd Newsweek report. 
Well, yeah, and it was there's MedNet compliance. Multiple folks are covering it, but the bottom line is they're like Amazon didn't make it clear that it was going to pick up stuff, and that's where we get to say, "Well, knock me down and steal my teeth." Mm-hmm. Double D mm-hmm. doesn't told you that because <laughs> we have, mm-hmm. you know. And but there are a group of nurses that are suing because. They say they didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, that's a that's a line from Nine the Musical. So, it, <laughs> see, random stuff coming out. Random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this group of nurses in their lawsuit against Amazon talking about how Alexa is violating HIPAA. And Alexa... You know, she is going to get fired on our sanction policy. We got to fire Alexa. She's violating HIPAA, not me. I put it there, but it's not me that's doing it. <laughs> not my fault. So, you know, they they had Northeastern University did a study study that showed that Amazon Alexa devices will wake up and record in response to statements such as "I care about." I messed up, I got something, and the devices wake up and record in response to words like head coach, pickle, and I'm sorry. And let me tell you something, I'm sorry gets said a lot when, you know, there's there's loud noise, loud conversation, somebody's going to say I'm sorry, and it may not be in a proper tone, but Alexa's still going to hear it. But I care about, I messed up, I got something, head coach pickle. I'm sorry, those are the only ones. I'm sure there are more. And I'm sure in certain medical environments, you probably hear, I'm sorry to inform you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I got something (laughs) to show you. Yeah, or you got something. (laughs) I I care about you. You know, I mean, who knows? Yeah, Yeah, but those are all words or phrases that would indicate, you know, some juicy information. Yeah, so apparently they all quit using their devices once they found this out. And they then got a version that has a mute function on it. So my my niece's husband was deployed in Afghanistan and she was told by, you know, the command, you don't have a conversation with us with an Alexa device or Google Home or any of that. And she would literally unplug those to if he called. Mm -hmm. So that you couldn't trust them, not mute them, not turn them off, unplug them. Right. Because guess how you turn it off and on? Alexa, off. (laughs) Alexa, on. Yeah, if you can talk to it and it turns on, then it's not off. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) And they're like, well, the blue light comes on because you sit and stare at that blue light all day. Anyway, that's going to be fun to watch. I love the blue ring. (laughs) (laughs) It it is going to be fun to watch, though, because it's like, how are they going to handle this? Because we know that what they're claiming is true. It's been proven. Mm -hmm. There's studies. There's all this other stuff. And there's no disclaimer I ever saw about don't use this around confidential conversations. So it's going to be interesting to watch that one. All right. Moving on to our next story. Let's talk about your retirement plan. (laughs) (laughs) So for those of you who don't have a retirement plan, probably like like most entrepreneurs, (laughs) 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 I'm going to work till I die. That's Uh, right. The the federal government is offering a $10 million. Yes, I said $10 million. Million dollars. Yeah, reward. So might be easier to get this than to actually win the lottery. Yeah. If you have info on a state-sponsored hacker disrupting critical infrastructure. There you go. So, so if you want to go out and be a spy, try it. Yeah. But there is one caveat. What's that? If you hear this now and you do get the $10 million, you become the official sponsor and full-time donor of Help Me With HIPAA. <laughs> it's a required element. If you well, get $10 million and you're a listener, Help Me With HIPAA, 
You got to hook us up. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Put us in a trust because you can trust us. (laughs) It it, it is interesting that this offer, this reward is not new. Um, It was $5 million and they doubled it. Yeah. So somebody can get sir. They're getting some sirs. Yeah. So, you know, one thing you could possibly do is if you think somebody might be a state sponsored hacker is to give them an Amazon Alexa device so that you can hear (laughs) what they're talking about. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) Yeah. So look into it if you want to, you know, give us some money. We'll take it. Yeah. And we don't even need, I don't know what. We get, give us a million dollars. You keep nine. Nine dollars. Yeah. You'll keep the rest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but go forth and prosper, people, uh, because yeah. that's the only way we're going to start getting this stuff under any level of control. Or if you just give me a lifetime supply of coffee delivered to my home, I would be happy. What kind of coffee, though? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That like super expensive one where it's like they get it out of poop or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I am a bit of a coffee slob. Snob. Slob. Snob. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, my wife says it's coffee slob because I'm always, you know, spilling grinds on the counters. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. But anyway, so, you know, we talked about that and how to make money, and 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 maybe this is related. I doubt it, but we've talked yeah. about. Revil, or as some folks call R evil. I'll let you figure that out for yourself. Yeah. But um, Revel, Revel, Revil. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the R anyway, evil. the hacking, the hacking gang that's been wreaking a lot of havoc. They were part of uh, the recent Kaseya hack. They were part of um, what else, Donna? Solar Winds, I believe. I, uh, I, the that weren't they the ones that got uh, the packing Colonial plant pipeline. That, in the meat packing plant, no, that no, it was somebody else because uh, the the folks that did Colonial were shut down. Uh, all their money was taken and everything. These yeah. folks just and and they disappeared in the middle of negotiations <laughs> with all those people that got hit by Kaseya. Yeah, so we talked about the Kaseya. Actually, actually, I think it was last week we talked about Kaseya uh, hack and how MSPs and IT folks were targeted by Revil. And in the meantime, they're gone. Yeah. Like Boop. just up and yeah, disappeared. Yeah, just so all of their negotiators, you know, cause they're, they, they're having a shortage of negotiators on these mm-hmm. ransom. I know we talked about how that was a new, a new job mm-hmm. function, but yeah, I'm part of me is like, great. They're gone. But you know, you and I both know they'll probably be back using a different name. But mm-hmm. all the people that were negotiating with them to try to get this settled, I'm like, oh my gosh, what yeah. do you do? It's like you have yeah. you can't even pay if you want to pay. Yeah. So everybody's kind of like left in the lurch, and <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? Even like I, as a business, cannot trust. My ransomware vendor to stick around. I mean, what's the worst? Because they'll tell you we're honest criminals and, you know, we are providing a service to you, showing you how you're, you're opening in security. It, I though, I, as I pointed out in a post, I said, this is a well funded business. Mm -hmm. Well funded businesses, they also have a business continuity plan. They also have the IPDER plans. <laughs> so they know how to run a, a network and secure it from people like them because that's what they do for a living. Yeah. So my guess is they've disappeared because somebody was getting close. So for, for those of you who have that ransomware instant response plan of I'll just pay the ransom, Yep. There might not be an option for you. Yeah, might want to back off of that one. Yeah, because I've heard that before. Oh, pay the rent? Yeah, I, I got insurance. Yeah. That's always the answer. Yeah. Number one, yeah. I don't think you know what your insurance covers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes the insurance agent's not really sure what they're selling you, so <laughs> check on that, too. 
Yeah. I've talked to some that are, well, the cyber thing is fairly new to us and we're not really sure. So be careful with that. Yeah. Move on. Yes. Yes. So HHS put out a, uh, an alert, uh, HC3 sector alert, talking about PAC system vulnerabilities. For those of you maybe not in healthcare, don't know what that stands for, Picture Archiving Communication System. Which we've talked about multiple times, just yes. in the last six, seven months. Yes. So it's something that, you know, it's certainly widely used by hospitals and research institutions, clinics, you know, just, you know they're all over the place. orthopedics group. Anybody that's doing diagnostic testing with ultrasounds, MRIs, x-rays, mm-hmm. those kind of scans, that use the DICOM, D-I-C-O-M protocols, that's when you get in trouble. Yep. And they announced, when was this? When did this come out? June 29th. They did an announcement that we haven't gotten around to covering because <laughs> we're bored. Um, <laughs> of a list of devices with known vulnerabilities according to the Department of Homeland Security. So this is not according to Donna and David that helped me with HIPAA. This is according to the people who are securing things. They have a whole list of PAC systems, and it's not a short list. Mm -mm. We're not talking two or three. whole list of PAC systems that have known vulnerabilities that you need to be figuring out what you're going to do. So the... How Malware Can Hide Behind HIPAA-Protected Images article. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong with this. They can infect the images. They can alter the images. They can block the images. They can just use this as a beachhead for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So if you use or secure a PAX, number one, make sure it's not on the list. And if it is, post haste. Mm-hmm. And so, then get to know all the stuff and listen to our previous episodes about it if you haven't. Yeah. So we certainly recommend everybody looking at their connected medical devices. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's certainly one of the things that is part of the, the hiccup framework we talk about frequently. But also kind of going back to the Alexa thing, people don't consider that a connected medical device, but it is a connected device. So make sure you Put that within your risk assessment as well to look at those things. So yeah, you, don't don't write off anything. Yeah. So if you're if you're like you know me, I don't have a PAX machine in my business, so <laughs> I could still use the Hiccup framework and just say instead of connected medical devices, I can just say connected devices. Anything mm-hmm. else that's not a computer, or, but it's connected, then I need to include that. How am I going to protect it? Mm-hmm. So definitely evaluate this and, and we have links to all this stuff on the web on the page so just go to the website you can find them all in one place it'd be cool if somebody did that on a regular basis yeah it would be <laughs> <laughs> uh and going back again to to last week we talked about the attack from say and msps and it and all that well CISA, uh, and i love how quick they are with stuff because for a government yeah. agency to be that fast I mean, we know we work with we know. stuff and it takes a lot of pushing things through and we don't even work, you know, in full time with them. We're just volunteer stuff. Yeah, I know, <laughs> so, right? But, but, you know, you always hear about the government red tape and how long it takes to do anything. So the fact that they come out with things so quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed with it. But they, they've come out with a mitigations and hardening guidance for MSPs and small and mid-sized businesses. So whether you're an MSP or whether you're an IT person in a business or, you know, you're a small business and you trying to do it yourself, you know, yep. God, God bless you. <laughs> bless your heart. Is all bless I your heart. Say. But anyway, they come out with some guidance on this. So uh, it's talking about, you know, the, what the threat is and how to think about it. And what are some, some guidelines for things. The, the funny part about it though, is Don and I are, are looking at this is we're like, this is these are things you should be doing anyway. You know, it's nothing. It's nothing <laughs> new. In so, our world, definitely. Yeah. So uh, it's a great guide. Don't get me wrong, and it's a needed guide. Uh, but it also it's only two pages. Yeah, 
it, it also really iterates everything we tell you on each and every episode. <laughs> do this, do this, do this. It's just another guy telling you to do all those same things, which you should be doing anyway. I mean, look, it's apply principle of least privilege. That, yeah. That's in HIPAA. Keep logs and and know what is in them. HIPAA. Network and host space monitoring. HIPAA. <laughs> the <laughs> work with customers to ensure hosted infrastructure is monitored and maintained. HIPAA. HIPAA. <laughs> Manage backups. HIPAA. HIPAA. Do a recovery <laughs> plan and test it. HIPAA. HIPAA. <laughs> Review your backup logs and test it. HIPAA. HIPAA. Manage supply chain risk. Implement strong operational controls like baselines for your systems and regularly update your operating system. Oh, HIPAA. Manage architectural risk. Okay. Yep. Still sounds like it. Manage authentication, authorization, and accounting procedures. Review contractual relationships with all your service providers to make sure they're being secure. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you know, it's all there. Yep. So the good thing about it is if, if you're doing everything we've been telling you to do, this is just, okay, good. It's got that done. <laughs> reiteration. And it's a good time <laughs> to go double check everything. Yeah. Well, it's also worth mentioning that this is not guidance for healthcare practices. Yeah. This is guidance for MSPs and small and medium-sized businesses. Funny how it looks a lot like HIPAA. Have you ever heard anybody say HIPAA for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've said it a few times on this podcast. Uh, uh, but but I, I do want to throw in there, I do like Sis's uh, new motto, mission, whatever you want to call it. Defend today and secure tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Because we're in a mess where we need to be defended, but they also want to make sure that we are securing ourselves moving forward. It doesn't continue. Yep. yep. So it so doesn't it, mean we get to stop this stuff. Right. If you're not following CISA, I highly recommend it, especially if you're an MSP. Mm-hmm. Get on their on their mailing list because they are, quote, unquote, the nation's risk advisor. Yeah. And your job is to manage risk. I want yep. to pay attention. Absolutely. All righty then. Very good. Next. On, uh, that, well, okay. So we're, you know, we're talking about MSPs and, and IT. So let's dive down a little bit into the IT rabbit hole to say, if you are using certain sonic wall devices, you better pay attention. So sonic wall device mm-hmm. would, would be like your firewall router. They have come out with a warning that says, uh, through the course of collaboration with trusted third parties, sonic wall has been made aware of threat actors actively targeting secure mobile access 100 series or an SMA 100 series or secure remote access SRA products running unpatched and end of life 8.x firmware in an imminent ransomware campaign using stolen credentials. Imminent. It gonna happen. Uh yeah, so go look right now. If you haven't dealt with this already, it's probably too late. But <laughs> if you haven't dealt with this already, quick go see if you have Sonic Wall, and uh, and if you do, get, make sure somebody's looked into it. That you know you don't have an old one, but I mean it's not that old. The end of life twenty nineteen device. So. Yeah. Well, this, this goes to the thing of people, oh, I just bought a such and such three years ago. Uh, I mm. get that. But number one, is it being updated? If you've got some type of annual license for the security on it, is that being kept up? And mm-hmm. is the device itself firmware? Is it, you know, is it still in date? There's a lot going on. And did you get a good deal on one right before it went out of life, end I'm of big. life because you weren't paying attention? <laughs> I found this thing and it was only half a price. We see this a lot when people switch IT vendors where mm-hmm. either they haven't had an IT vendor or an IT vendor comes in before us and they, they don't address this. Pro- you know, usually what I've seen is usually because the client's like, well, I just bought that. 
uh, three years ago, and they don't they don't argue with the client, and I, you know, for lack of a better word to use, <laughs> argue with the client to say, look, it still needs to be addressed. <laughs> and so we come in and we're we're finding things that are like, dude, this thing should have been replaced a long time ago. Yeah, we're talking with a prospect right now that their IT company that they've had for five years told them that their firewall is seven years out of date. So wow. that, that means the MSP had five years to tell them <laughs> wow. that it was out of date. It was out of date when they came in. Why did it take five years for them to realize this? They didn't even look. No. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I have no excuse. I can't take up for you there, buddy. That was, <laughs> you dropped the ball. So any on any of these things, I recommend going to either your internal IT, going to your MSP and saying, I need to know what the end of life is on my hardware. And I would even do it in, on some of your software, your off Microsoft Office versions, your Windows versions, your PC, your firewalls, your network devices. You know, let me know when the end of life of these things are going to be. Go ahead and put it on the calendar. Yeah. I, I know a year from now I got to buy Three more PCs because they're going end of life. I've got to buy a new firewall in two years. It's going end of life, whatever. There's no reason to not know this stuff. It's published way in advance. Uh -huh. Oh, and by the way, at the end of the article, there's a tweet, a screenshot of a tweet that said, replace imminent with ongoing because they have actually started their underway. So hmm. I'm like, yeah, and that was, you know, two days ago. Yeah. Um, it also, let me point out, uh, we did say a model number, but don't, don't just look at it and go, Oh, I'm not using the SMA 100 series because there are other ones in the article that they point out that have already hit end of life. Yeah. SRA 4,600, 1,600, 4,200, 1,200. So if you've got these and you're like, Oh, I don't have the SMA, whatever do look at it, look at it and verify well, there's even one that's still supported in limited retirement mode. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what that means. Yeah. But so, uh, so look at those things. You definitely need to know, even if you just got one, because not saying anybody would do this, but maybe the MSP sold you an old piece of hardware. So even if you just bought one a year ago, doesn't mean it's not out of date. Well, and their recommendation is to disconnect immediately. Yeah. Bye bye. Deal with yeah. this. Pull the plug on it now. All right. And um, I guess rounding out the craziness in IT. Uh, this is one where I just want to bang my head against the wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got the wrong link there, but I'll fix it. Don't worry. It, it's it's OK. Uh, so I got I got uh, mentioned in a in a Facebook thread. And it said something to the effect of, David, I would sure like to get your opinion on this, <laughs> which normally is something HIPAA related. But I go to it. It's not HIPAA related. It's an article that was talking about Microsoft's new cloud PC offering that they're going to be pushing out, which I love the fact that they make it sound like it's something brand new that's never been done before when you know this type of technology has been around for probably two decades. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, if you go back to the old mainframes, it's essentially working that way. Exactly. Where I grew up. Uh, I mean, I remember in the early 2000s, like literally 2000, 2001, having a medical office set up uh, this way, running a Linux server and, and all this kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, they, they come out with, with, with this and they're pushing it and all that. But they're also saying uh, within the article Microsoft says that if you're using the cloud PC, you no longer need endpoint security for personal devices. Blech. Which I was like, yeah, what? Say again. Um, Come again. I mean, I That's just. That's exactly the only thing you can say. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those, you just put your head down in your hand and like, what in the world are you doing, yeah. Microsoft? We already have enough problem getting people to take security seriously and do the right thing. And then you come along and say, if you just use this product, you don't need security. <sighs> I mean, I, I get it. There's probably a way 
you could get around that. For example, if you are using the cloud PC and maybe you have everybody's computer set up in like a kiosk mode where they can't do anything but get to the cloud security and it mm -hmm. won't run anything else. It's completely locked down, which I can, I can see that working for that, but I can also see people going, I can't, I can't use the computer <laughs> for other things that I want to use it for. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that it can't be accomplished. <laughs> I am saying it's going to be a tough sell. And just saying you don't need endpoint security without also going, but there's a lot of considerations if you're going to even consider that. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's irresponsible really. All but right. if you're, if, if you or your IT vendor is talking about this new, new platform that's coming out and, and yeah, so it, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's basically RDP. You've certainly heard us talk about that. You're using RDP or a browser, which might even be, somewhat worse <laughs> to get to a cloud version. Basically it's a computer running somewhere else <laughs> instead of your computer. The cloud is nothing but a computer somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. I, it's I just a for, computer. I know for some of you, you're going to be like, Oh my God, don't tell me. <laughs> but <laughs> you have to think of it the same way. Now imagine this, you have employees that are using this and it sounds fantastic, but employees are terrible about, going to a website, putting in their credentials. And then when the browser says, do you want me to save your credentials? They go, yes. sure. That would be fantastic because now I don't have to remember it. <laughs> that is not, that is not a password manager. That is a convenience tool. It's not made for security or anything else. It's security. just convenience. Security. It's just convenience. So now you've got people that just, Hey, I can just pull up your, for example, Chrome browser and go right to the link. And guess what? It fills in your username and password for me. <laughs> and it's a personal device because you're working from home. And you took Microsoft's word for it and didn't put any security on it. I mean, the hackers are having a field day with this. Like, that's a fantastic article. You should push it out to all your clients. <laughs> yeah, just tell everybody. You don't need this. I mean, in a, it's in not a time, that simple. No. In a, in a time where we're talking about we need more robust, more security, changing the culture, all this stuff. It just goes completely backwards to everything we've tried to accomplish. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, we just, you know, $10 million trying to catch these people. And now Microsoft is like, here, we're going to make it easier for you. Mm. So um, you will be hearing more about the Windows 365 cloud PC, I'm sure. So if you do, You've been warned. Don't, yeah, don't, don't be part don't, of the David, the David and Donovan told you so episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, here's, here's another reason. Here we are. Uh, okay. They just say that, but then they're also, we're in the midst of a major issue that needs to be patched in Windows. The print spool service vulnerability mm -hmm. that's out there. I mean, that's actively being used. And it's a major update that needs to hit every Windows box. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're having to do that today, but they're also telling you, well, our next new thing, you're not going to have to worry about. Yeah. Well, what part of that makes sense? Here's how I equate this, because you and I both know to get to the cloud to use your PC, you have to use a PC. <laughs> so it's it's like saying, okay, we are going to take all of your functionality of your PC and we're going to move it to the cloud. So we're going to, we're going to take it out of your, your living room area of your house. That's at the front door. We're going to take it out of there. We're going to move it to a back bedroom. And because we're going to lock it in this back bedroom, you can now leave the front door of your house unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Why would you leave the front door of your house unlocked? Because you've got your valuables locked in a different room. Yeah, makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 just. Uh, but we've been dealing with this for a while in these discussions of of similar implementations, and we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But anytime you think that you can assume that you have it covered, that's the moment you know wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's almost like it reminds me when I used to when I first started riding motorcycles as a kid. And I got my first dirt bike. 
And I remember the guy that sold it to me and he said, the day you think you've got this thing whooped, it will whoop you. There you go. <laughs> and sure enough, man, I thought I could be evil Knievel. You know, I could ride a wheelies. I could, you know, hit ramps and all this. And next thing I know, I'm in the hospital getting stitches, <laughs> road rash, everything else. There you uh, go, buddy. So, yeah, d- never be too confident um, when it comes to cybersecurity. All right. So that wraps up our cyber squirrel <laughs> episode. Uh, remember to follow, share us out on your favorite social media, rate our podcasting out, and help us spread the word. And for Donna and myself, remember, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.